still have on set Amir Sharifi and Mathias Burgart and of course Pierre-Etienne Franc who just uh, joined us. I'm actually very impressed to see all these important uh, projects developing on uh, a wide reach across all geographies. But uh, Mathias, let me ask you a question. How will Ardian seize this hydrogen opportunity? First of all, uh, as you see, we are very fortunate uh, to, to have so... So those companies, or being sure of those companies which are so dynamic and already quite advanced in their hydrogen projects. And so obviously they, they will be the, the main source of uh, opportunities. And to, so not only they, they bring us the investment opportunities, uh, which uh, as they are very professional, then they are able to, uh, to make assess uh, those projects and, and understand what are our key uh, criteria for us, as was mentioned by Amir. But also, I was mentioned before, they also teach us. Uh, right. But uh, our duty then is to learn fast. Uh, we cannot uh, make uh, them uh, waste their time. And for that, uh, it's very important that we have a dedicated task force, as I mentioned before, and to bring the experts such as, as Fabio in, the, in, in, the, in our team uh, in order we speak the same language and that we are more efficient and that, above all, we are able to bring the most cost-efficient cost of capital uh, um, investors uh, to, to, to finance the project. Cost of capital will be a key driver of uh, the cost of hydrogen. And this uh, dedicated task force is led by Amir Sharifi. I, hon I have understood that you manage this uh, Ardian hydrogen team. Um, yeah, I'm lucky enough to be in charge of a dedicated team. Uh, seven people who are uh, across Europe and Americas are dedicated to this topic and it's really uh, thrilling to, to see a number of projects. And um, uh, we've been taught as well by an operating partner that you have seen before, Fabio. He has trained us a lot about the industry, so we, we've learned a lot on the way. Um, we've been then setting up a dedicated uh, workforce um, with uh, the different uh, portfolio companies, 10 portfolio companies that, that I mentioned earlier, uh, together um, that are present across the whole value chain from production to midstream to downstream. So, so, so with this, we, we can have a global view. Um, maybe what we can also say is that um, along the, what we have heard along the summit is that regulation and trade will be a key element of, of this play. And on our side, we are currently applying to become member of the Hydrogen Council and of the Hydrogen Europe. So this will greatly benefit our network and understanding of uh, the policy um, environment. So we will work, um, I think, hand in hand with our portfolio companies, with industrial partners, to be involved, uh, I would say, in all the countries where we will want to invest. Uh, we're, of course, very open to work uh, with counterparts. Um, uh, it, we think it's a collective effort uh, to raise the market to maturity. So it's not just uh, um, you, no, people should not go on their own. I think working in teams is really important. And we should build a strong market for hydrogen infrastructure investment thanks to cooperation. Thank you uh, so much, Amir. And it's pretty clear that Ardian is very much dedicated uh, to uh, this topic. Pierre-Etienne Franc, thank you uh, for attending our summit today. Uh, Pierre-Etienne, uh, you're very uh, well known in the hydrogen world as well. You were uh, the founder and former co-secretary of Hydrogen uh, Council and president of Hydrogen uh, Europe. And beyond this role in managing air liquid activities in the hydrogen technology and corporate uh, venture fields over the last 10 years. Pierre-Etienne, can you tell us how and why after 25 years of working on hydrogen at Air Liquide, you decided to make a big change in your career? So I didn't work 25 years in hydrogen, but 25 years in Air Liquide, yes, and it's true that progressively, with the time, over the last 10 years, even though the portfolio I was managing was broader than hydrogen, I spent more and more of my time in hydrogen and I became more addicted to hydrogen than to air liquid. And it's true also that uh, for those of you who know all the efforts that we've pushed forward over the last years to, to frame the sector, to, to gather the vision, to set up a narrative, to build the momentum where it is today, I have been advocating for the need for infra funds over the last two years. And uh, it happens that uh, a mix of things as, as, as catalyst, catalyst in a way. The momentum uh, has increased with uh, the COVID need for recovery plans has uh, generated a, a big policy support that you've seen uh, uh, explained by the, the policy makers uh, earlier today. Many projects are moving to scale. You've had seen some numbers. 
Uh, and I had the opportunity to start building uh, a, a project around the infrastructure fund called 5T Hydrogen. So it's exactly what we wanted to do. Uh, it's basically to try to mobilize forces between the industry players and the financial players. Exactly what Ardian is trying to do now with its uh, key uh, operating partners and the companies that you are invested in. Trying to basically move a sector which is still nascent, with still some risk on technology, on loads, on pricing escalation, to an infrastructure business. Hydrogen is going to be the asset class of the next decade, that's for sure. The question is to be the first one in the game to make sure that this venture to infra approach is working. And this is what we are trying to do. And when I looked into those infra funds, I found that there were many players that have renewable funds with a pocket for hydrogen. But if you don't have a pure play focused fund, which is basically gathering industry expertise and financial expertise, it's going to be very difficult to move the community into that. This is what we are doing. We've started three months ago. We are, we are small, we are young. We, got, uh, we are very lucky to get some support, initial support from financial, uh, from industrial uh, players from the US, 300 million worth of uh, early support. But we will need more. And hopefully, Ardian may be a, a, a help for that because we need some investment expertise and we need fund managers like Ardian to basically uh, help us move to down the road in the future. But uh, we will see what's next. And the momentum is indeed here. Thank you so much, uh, Pierre-Etienne Franc, for this. And Mathias, what kind of transactions will you be investing in? Well, uh, we aim uh, to invest in the full chain of hydrogen. First of all, as, uh, as I mentioned before, we want to be on the upstream side by uh, producing uh, uh, hydrogen in particular through our renewable energy platforms. We also want to be in the midstream uh, segment, and uh, there we are, as you know, uh, very strong with companies such as Geocell, uh, SPMR, which is a major uh, pipeline infrastructure in France. Uh, we have this partnership with uh, Aduea uh, in Italy, and uh, we're also a shoulder of Otway Rete Gas, uh, one of the larger distribution companies of gas in, in Italy. Uh, and we will always, uh, obviously, love to, to work uh, closely with, uh, with uh, Enagas uh, in, in Spain. Uh, last but not least, the downstream sector is very important, and there we, as you know, we are a very large player in the transport industry, both on airports and, uh, and um, um, airports like Milan Airport, for example, which has already projects in, in the hydrogen segment, uh, but as well on the road sector, being one of the first mover in the, in the, in the refueling uh, stations. So all this, uh, we want really to, to cover the, 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 the full segment, but for this, uh, we need uh, basically uh, a different thing. We need to, to partner with uh, was industrial companies, as was mentioned uh, uh, before, but we also need to partner with experts and, and, and professionals which are dedicated to that, and that's why we are very happy to, um, to, uh, to this uh, conversation, discussion, maybe more at some point uh, with Pierre Etienne and 5T. Uh, I think uh, we are very lucky uh, to be at the infancy of this new asset class, as, uh, as was uh, mentioned by Pierre Etienne, that I think will be the largest asset class as well in the infrastructure world in the, in the next decade. That's true that you have a common uh, vision. We are, we are starting this discussion. <laughs> <laughs> it's the beginning of a romance. I, I can tell from both of your answers that you do have a common vision on that. Um, to conclude, Mathias? Yes. Uh, to conclude, um, we, we, we believe uh, that the, there is uh, there are plenty of quality projects uh, with a great uh, professionals fully dedicated to, to this industry and that um, we, uh, to, to be really uh, at, the, at the beginning and the, and the first movers uh, of this hydrogen uh, world, which is just starting, but that will be really big. I think it's uh, for investors, for our clients, is really the right point in time to, to focus on this new industry because there will be a premium to the first mover to the in, to industry as it happens in the in renewable energy space. For that, uh, one very important condition is uh, the regulation, is uh, the regulator who will solve this uh, chicken and egg uh, issue that we mentioned right. before. Uh, and that's critical to, to if we want to, to, to meet this uh, crucial uh, target of the carbon neutrality by 2050. Um, so uh, I think uh, this is an important step because we, we managed to gather the different uh, 
industry experts, the regulators, the industrial, the the the, the, the uh, and the um, and the, um, the, the the industrials. Are, yes, uh, to show our clients that this is happening, this is now, and that. Uh, the, they uh, they need to uh, to consider very seriously this uh, this asset class uh, because again uh, in a few years it will be too late uh, and there will be a clear premium uh, to the one who have uh, moved first. And you do have a solid base uh, for that. Thank you uh, so much, um, Mathias. Thank you, Amir. Thank you, uh, Pierre Etienne, for being on set.